David. David. David, wake up. Huh. David. What is it? I hate your house. You what? I hate your house, David. 3.17 in the morning. I know, baby. but we need to talk about this. We need to find our own place. Okay, okay. Why? Well, look around. There's too much leather. The ceilings are too low. It's too dark. It's the middle of the night. But... Yeah, yeah, but the decor, it's all wrong. The browns are too brown. The tones are too uh, muted. What's up with the Western theme? You're from Philadelphia. I like Western. Then go see one. We need to get rid of this stuff. We need to brighten it up. And the kitchen... Hey, it... what's wrong with you? This is important. Everything here is yours. We need stuff that is ours. Okay. And we need I it now. Get it. There's a crazy pregnant lady talking. <laughs> Ow. Okay, I'm sorry. Everything will be okay, sweetheart. I promise. We need to look for our own place, David. You... I'm so serious about this. Okay. You just lay down and then we will, okay? You just go to sleep and then everything will be okay. Okay. You need your sleep. I like my dining room table. It's a slab of knotty pine. Well, the high back chairs that go with it. No. The, the, the matching... Uh, uh, my brass bookends. The rest sale. Sean, would you care for some tummy tea? I have plenty. It, I already take something for my stomach in the morning. It's called a donut. Which clogs your arteries like sweat socks. But they're my arteries. Clog them at your own risk. Dear God, I miss those. Want one? Uh, huh? Throw it in the air. I'll run under it. I received a call I'd like you to follow up on. I cannot. I have the meeting on the Foster Family Recruiting Initiative. That can wait. That cannot wait, Sean. An influx of quality families will unsnarl our backlog, reduce placement waiting time. Winnow down our group home population. You agree with me? Of course I agree with you. Then what are we talking about? Her name is Mrs. Harley. She lives at Addison on Rosemont. And what is so urgently the matter with Mrs. Harley that it takes precedence over the health of our system? She called to report hearing a child being beaten more than once. Why did she not call the police? She did. She claims they weren't taking her seriously enough, so she called us. I would like you to investigate, and I will go to the recruitment meeting. You would do that? Will you? I would. Mm. Got me. All rise. Good morning, people. There it is. Evelyn Pankow, Your Honor, representing Carl Hudson. Don Russell for the state. Okay, uh, this is a sentencing hearing in the case of Carl Hudson, who's 13, and uh, convicted of um, murder in the first degree. Judge Gray, the defense is prepared to show powerful mitigating factors in the events that led Carl Hudson to fatally shoot Leonard Beck, his grandfather. Such as? The victim was 67 years old and suffering from terminal lung cancer. In shooting him, the defendant believed that he was ending his grandfather's suffering. And unfortunately, Leonard Beck is not here to support that notion. This was no mercy killing, Your Honor. Carl Hudson fired multiple shots which missed before hitting and finally killing his grandfather in cold blood. Multiple gunshots are consistent with the defendant's explanation of events. The defendant has a history of violent and antisocial behavior which predates this murder. There is a big difference between antisocial behavior and murder. Okay, okay. Let's not re-argue the case. We'll hear statements when, Mr. Van Exel? This afternoon, 1 o'clock. See everyone then. I'm Maxine Gray from the Department of Children and Families. Are you Nadia Patsakin? 
May I help you? I was hoping to ask you a few questions. Thank you. You have a lovely house. Thank you. Fifteen years we have been here. We are from Bucharest. Thank you. <clears throat> and Mrs. Patsakin. Oh, please, Nadia. Uh, the reason I'm here is a neighbor, Nadia, a Mrs. Uh, Harley. I do not know her. Well, she's right next door. You should talk with her. She's very sweet. Anyway, she called my office to say um, she heard what she thought was the sound of a child being beaten in this house. Not possible. She said she, she heard it on three separate occasions. Oh, my husband, Emil, he has a sister. Her son, sometimes he is here, misbehaves. Oh. Perhaps you could give me Emil's sister's number. I'll call her and we'll clear this up. She has no telephone. Well, uh, perhaps you could give me her address and I'll visit her. I do not know address. I see. Then if you give me your husband's office number, perhaps he can tell me the address. Emil, he's a very busy man. You give me your phone number. I give it to Emil. Emil will call you. Yes. Thank you for your time. to say I'm impressed. Oh, what you giving me props now? Yeah, props. Big ups. Showing you love. Oh, cool. so what I do? Well, these evaluations show you have not missed a single session of your anti-gang program. When I got business to handle, I handle it. So, crossing on that level with me, are you, are you serious about getting out of the gang life or you just tell the nice lady judge what she wants to hear? You mean do I still bang? I mean, I put those days behind me. You remember when I first met you, I asked you if you had any dreams? Yeah, I remember. Well, what if I asked you that today? You got any dreams? Do you? I'm not talking about me. I am. My dream is that, um, my dream is to have a home where everybody I love could grow up and grow old. Happy, healthy, and safe. Mm. That's a stupid dream. Well, that's all I got. Now you. I guess, I guess the same thing. Traditional gray curb appeal, total charmer. Sounds like my resume. Completely remodeled, custom woodwork, island kitchen, granite countertops. How much? Seven. 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 We can't afford seven. I know, I know. God, when I think about the money I was making in corporate law, a place like this would have been a no-brainer. I mean, we could afford it if we sold both our houses. I mean, my mother would be on the street. Exactly. Which is why we should just give up all this nonsense and go live on my boat. I'm not living on your boat. Why not? Come on, it's paid for. So all the comforts of home, you could raise the sails anytime we want, anywhere. I'm not living on your boat, David. You don't find it even just a little bit romantic? Pull over. 
All right, look, forget I mentioned. Seriously, pull over. Look at that house. It's nice. Nice. It's a dream. It's the McGuinn place. Who are the McGuinns? The perfect family. Two people that loved each other, a gang of healthy kids, blonde hair, white teeth, dogs, tea cats. Barbecues in the summer, big happy parties at Christmas. You know, when I was in high school and my dad got sick and things were <clears throat> bad. Mm -hmm. I used to sneak out of the house and come over here, and I would sit right there, and I would listen to the sounds of a happy family, an actual happy family, not one that was playing at it like we were. That, David, I want that house. That house isn't for sale, Amy. Well, I, I didn't mean that house specifically. I just meant, you know, one like that. Mm. The kids playing in the backyard. Somebody practicing the piano. We will find our house. And when we do, it'll sound just like that. I promise. Shirt sleeves in winter is one of the upsides of global warming. So you go put on a pair of Bermuda shorts, it's supposed to rain. Uh, you know what they say. Spring showers bring... Wet blankets, which the city insists we pick up. Huh? Believe me, it is not fun. I'm just curious. If it's going to rain, why are we handing out water? Oh, we need to tie you down back here. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I can't do it. I'm about to take you off my block. Business lady. Yeah. Let her go. You ain't got nothing to say about no. it. No. 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 Crystal. Mr. Beck, how are you related to the defendant? I'm his uncle. His mother's my sister. Would you say you two enjoy a close relationship? I don't enjoy anything about that kid. He's a bad seed. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Mr. Russell, let's dispense with the editorializing. Let's stick with the facts. Mr. Beck, have you ever been close to the defendant? When he was a little kid, he was okay. Until he got about eight or nine, then he turned. Turned? He started getting into trouble. Shoplifting, fights, vandalism. He even stole from his mother. Shoplifting, fights in school, is it necessary to waste the court's time with this? This isn't a trial. Prior history is relevant in sentencing. Mr. Beck, did you ever hear your nephew say he wanted to hurt your father? Well, he never told me directly, no. I mean, he knew better than that. But I know how he felt. He hated my old man. Is Mr. Beck a mind reader? Sustained. Uh, describe for the court your nephew's relationship with your father. My dad tried to give Carl some discipline. I mean, he was strict like that. Believe me, I know. In the end, he saw where Carl was heading, and he gave up on him. And Carl hated him for it. No further questions, Your Honor. Don't let that kid get away with this, Your Honor. He should rot in jail for what he did. This way, let's go. For how long has he been held prisoner in that basement? Badu says he was brought into the city by a truck. He was met by a man with a beard and scary eyes. And this man took him to the restaurant. Where? Ask him if he knows where. Badu is the restaurant. No, she doesn't. He doesn't know. He says there were many children like him. And then this woman took him to this house. She forced him to work like an animal. At night, he just slept in the basement. He's been here since the summertime. Dear God. That woman is going to jail. She cannot hurt you any longer. Tell him that. Femeia Ayao. 
This has been a rumor for a long time. Kids being smuggled in from Eastern Bloc countries, forced to work as indentured servants. Where do we go from here? I'll question the woman. Try to find out the name of this restaurant. There are children involved. That makes it a DCF matter. You'll be kept in the loop. Excuse me, Ms. Gray. Um, he's been speaking about his brother, Sorin. Sorin? Yes. Is there a last name? Um, Parashka. He says that he and his brother were brought here together, and uh, Sorin was left at the restaurant. We will look for your brother. We'll do everything we can. Please tell him that. I guess it's in front later. You permit? No, I swear to God, man, if I see him again, I'm gonna knock him cool to the jaw, man. It ain't even gonna be no joke. I swear. Man, are you serious? Uh, excuse me. Are you supposed to be in here? Excuse you, man. I'm on the phone. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wait a minute. No, I don't think Judge Gray would approve of this. I don't care, man. Take your nearer behind back out that door. Kick rocks, man. I ain't playing with you. Give me 50 feet. And don't slam my door. Well, Albrook? What's wrong? You can't help me. Come on. Olive Branch, what is it? Filing problem? She's in there. Who? That girl. What girl? I don't know. Prunella. Graciela? Yeah, that's the one. She's on the phone, she's got her feet on the desk, and she won't leave. I'll handle it. I oh, got stabbed nine times. Listen, y'all, I'm about to snap off up in here. Unless you want me to get all up in your grill, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. I ain't even playing. I will drop it like it's hot. Feeling me? Are we down? Girl, you whack. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, seriously, you what? Hey, I speak home, girl. Mrs. Hudson, do you believe Carl hated his grandfather? Quite the opposite. I believe that Carl was trying to earn his grandfather's love and mine. Yours. Carl knew how upset I was over my father's illness. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. And you think that this might have influenced your son? Two people he loved were suffering. He thought that by putting his grandfather out of his misery, he would put me out of mine. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Overruled. M Mrs. Hudson, uh, two very distinct portraits of your son have been painted in this courtroom. How, how do you reconcile that? Judge, my life has been a struggle. I've worked two, sometimes three jobs just to make a home. I've had to raise my son by myself. When we moved in with my father, things were starting to get better. Go on. Carl's a good boy. <laughs> but he was acting out. He was getting into trouble. I tried to be there for him. I did. My father's influence helped, but when he got sick... My father was my rock. The only thing that I could really count on. Seeing him that way, listening to the rasp in his chest, looking at the fear in his eyes. Carl's made mistakes, but he's no murderer. Please, don't send him to jail. He thought he was doing the right thing. That's all I have now. It's a brand new unit featured in last month's Architectural Digest. It has three levels, stunning city views, a cook's kitchen to die for. What about the parking? Uh, two spaces come with the unit, along with walk-in storage. Just so you know, I am fielding offers. Would you give us a minute? Please take your time. This place is a steal. It's a townhouse. It's also bigger and newer than any house we've looked at so far. Hey, there's no picket fence, there's no yard, there's no charming street. 
It's okay, so it's not your dream house. We, we, your dream house is out of our price range, which is why we agreed to come. I know, I know. Look at other options. Okay, I'm just saying, I, look, I don't want to talk you into anything, but let's explore our options here. Let's educate ourselves. What are the pros and cons? It's close to work. It's close to the kids' school. It's self-contained. There's a grocery store and a dry cleaner. I like the master bedroom. The kids could each have their own bathroom, you know? They got a gym, a uh, game room, pool, jacuzzi. Oh, they have massage services. They got a, a, a putting green. Hmm. Where are you going to find a place with all that? Look, if I sold my place, the one you hate, we can afford it, and your mother doesn't have to move anywhere. I get to pick the furniture. I'm still making a pitch for my dining room table. So, what do we think? We were just discussing that. <clears throat> we think... We think we'll make an offer. There's nothing you could have done. She was 13. They're gonna find him. I did this. No, that's that's crazy. Look. Yeah, I know you mean well, but I need to be alone. you sick tired loaded the miracle of motherhood told it only gets worse from here don't you remember if women could remember this the planet would be a childless rock so david and i found a place i see are you upset no dear what sort of a place is it townhouse one of those urban villages brand new Wedged between a bank and a multinational insurance company. Nothing says home like multinational insurance. About to become an official member of the superstore convenient living generation. No one's forcing you to move, honey. Well, we'll have triple the space. Be nearby to everything. That sounds good. Yeah. I drove by the McGuinn house the other day. That old thing? I love that house. It was so homey and so happy. Like, when you and Dad first got married, didn't you have your version of the dream house? Well, we found the perfect place right away. It was meant to be. I knew we could stay there forever. See that? I want that. We didn't get that house. So your father and I took this one. We uh, peeled off the horrid wallpaper and polished the floors, and replaced the ancient appliances, because that's what people did in those days. We uh, worked. We fixed things. We made them our own. Do you think the McGuinns were as happy as they seemed? Uh, she cheated. He drank. They stayed together for the sake of the children. Nice house, though. Carl, tell the court what happened on the day of the shooting. Why? You know what happened. Carl, it's important that you cooperate. I was home. My mom called. She asked me to go upstairs and check on Grandpa. And did you? Yeah. I went up to his room. He was in bed, coughing real bad. That's when I saw the key to his gun rack. Where was that key, Carl? On the table next to his bed. I knew what he wanted me to do with it. And what was that? To get the gun. The one on the far left with the bullets in it. He wanted me to kill him. That's a lie! Mr. Beck. He's lying! Mr. Beck, sit down. Why would you think your grandfather would want you to do that? Because he said he did. My father was a religious man. He would never say that. Mr. Never. Beck, one more word. Go, go on, Carl. Tell the court what happened next. I did like you wanted. I got the gun. I aimed it. I pulled the trigger. 
But my hand was shaking. My shots went all over. <laughs> it was for the best. It was what he wanted. Wait, wait a minute. That key was kept downstairs. My dad was too weak to get out of bed. Is that true, Carl? Look at me, Carl. Who gave you the key? I already told you. Grandpa. Who told you to get the gun? It was what he wanted. Mama knew he did it for him. Carl! She said that he'd love us for it. That he'd forgive me for all the trouble that I caused. Mary! God, you bitch! I told him to get that gun. He did what he did on his own free will. Mama, no! Shut up, Carl! You don't understand. The pain that my father was in. His chest was full of fluid. He was just lying there, drowning in his bed. It was horrible. You gave him the key? You persuaded him to kill his own grandfather? It was the right thing. It's what he wanted. Mrs. Hudson, do not say another word. She doesn't have to. Crystal, where you been? Vincent! <laughs> Vince! Anyone call you Vince? No. I hate that name, Vince. I had a boyfriend who liked to cheat on me, and his name was Vince. Vinny. Vinny! Vinny, I like Vinny. Vinny. Vinny's your friend. Yo, Vinny! You my friend, Vinny? You're drunk. No, I'm ding, ding, ding. <laughs> hey. Oh. Stop with your concern, Buck. This is not even my drug of choice. Yeah. Do you have a drug of choice? Can't be that dumb, huh? Hello? Crystal? Meth? You're... you're a meth addict? No, not anymore. I am two years sober. Now... I like wine. I think I'm gonna change my name. To Vino. Do you like that name, Vino? Vino and Vinny. <laughs> oh, don't take my Vino. Oh, away, I'm Vinny. just gonna, I'm just gonna make you some coffee. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a sponsor or something who, who we could call? And are you gonna judge me now? Well, I'm not judging you. I was trying to help. I know that. She was just a little girl. I know. There was nothing that you could have done to save her. Okay. Shh. Okay. Okay. Not like this. 
We need to call somebody who can help. Get out. Get the hell out of here. Get out. Zorin? Zorin Parasha. Zorin Parashka, are you Zorin? Zorin? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that? I have done nothing wrong. You profit from the sale of children. Their parents beg us to take them. This is their dream. This? It's a better life. You disgust me. You're disgusting. Wait, wait, the other boy. You know a Zorin Parashka. I don't know any Zorin. Sorry, Maxi. brand new family who are thrilled to provide a new home for Radu as long as it takes to find his parents. I take it they speak Romanian? They cook the food, they know the bedtime stories, and if they stay long enough, they'll teach them the folk dances. Mm -hmm. Maxime, this is a good thing. This is a win. Half a one. He was being beaten and locked in a basement. Now he has a chance. Look at him. A little lonely boy. Waiting for a new set of strangers. Affectionate and caring strangers. I suppose. If I had my way, I would buy a big old wonderful house and all the lost children would have a place to grow up. Yeah, well, dreams and 50 cents will get you a... A donut. Uh... Give me that. Mrs. Gregg, got a present for you. We found these three kids downtown. Two big guys were working at Stock Boys in a grocery store. The little fellow at a floral mart. Thank you. Any names or relative information? No, my Romanian is not what it used to be. And yeah, our interpreter's here, so. Radu! Soren! Radu! Gentlemen, if you would excuse me, I need to call this family and tell them that they're getting the two-for-one deal. Now it's a win. Today it's just you and me, Carl. And I'm going to say some things to you. Some of it you'll understand, and some of it hopefully will make sense to you later. What you did was wrong. You took a life, and that is a terrible, terrible thing. But the truth is that although you pulled the trigger, you did not act alone. Your mother exploited you, Carl. Your, your family labeled you a bad seed. Your, your uncle called you that right here in this courtroom. Your mother caused you to believe that by performing this horrible act, you would somehow overcome this label. I'm, I'm sorry. I am sorry for what she did to you. She's in custody now, and the court system will decide how she should be punished, but she won't hurt you again. So the court's judgment is that the defendant be committed to DCF as a delinquent for the maximum term of four years. Further, I'm ordering that he be placed in a residential treatment center providing intensive therapy tailored to address the unique needs of familial abuse victims. Upon completion of this therapy, DCF aftercare is ordered so that we can find a suitable foster home environment for Carl to serve out his parole. You have an opportunity now to Prove who you really are, to rise above the labels and create your own value. You're not your past.
Carl. You're not your family. You can have a good life. I wish you well. Ready? Bring it on. Look, that's y'all. That is not the business. I don't know why I'm here. Step off, Shorty. Let Big Mama come with the 411. She's crazy. Believe me. All right, look, the phone call, it wasn't nothing. It was to my homegirl. It's local. Graciela. I mean, I'll pay you a nickel every day until we pay. Graciela. <laughs> The reason I wanted to see you this morning is not because you used my phone. Oh, uh, because I had my feet on your desk? You had your feet on my desk? Both of them. We'll get into that later. No, Graciela. Graciela Reyes, you have successfully completed your three-month anti-gang empowerment program with a perfect attendance record. It ain't none. I think it's a very big thing. Guys? Congratulations. Congratulations. Hey, good work, girlfriend. What did you just call me? She scares me to death. <laughs> the lady judge is very proud of you. Oh, the nice lady judge. Just very Vincent, what are you doing home? Um, I'm testing the healing powers of uh, home fire and cheap brandy. <sighs> How are they working? Not well. Did you have a bad day? It sucked. Feel like talking about it? <laughs> Not really. Well, I can't drink brandy, and this is not much of a fire. I saw a girl get killed the other day. Then I watched someone fall apart over it. I I'm so sorry. It's right in front of Outreach. It happened in like a... It's like a second, and... She was just gone. That's horrible. Did, did you know her? I drove her to a shelter once. I was such a fool to think that I could handle it out there, that I could find some safe distance and, and, still, and still make an impact. I'm not a fool, Vincent. <laughs> yeah, it's easy for you to say. You get it all figured out. Okay, whatever it is, I have yet to even define it. Right. You're brilliant. Beautiful, sane, stable. You, you are the standard to which none of the women in my life measure up. Thanks a lot. Are we, Thank you. Are, are, we, are we talking about a specific woman here? I keep meeting the same one. Who? Who is it? At first... She's, uh, she's strong, she's tough, independent. Then she folds. Is it Crystal, the woman you work with? They all end up needing me to, uh, what? I don't know, rescue them, I guess. And I don't because I can't. Which brings me back to the, um, the safe distance thing. I like distance. Distance is good. Yeah. Well, you get enough distance and you end up alone. Exactly. Why can't they be equals? 
partners. Let's level the playing field. Why can't they be more like you? Here's the thing, Vincent. Don't be afraid of vulnerability. Yours or someone else's. It's not a weakness. And don't run. Not this time. chance to talk to your mother about everything yeah she seemed fine with it i reassured her that she wouldn't have to move but i can't help feeling i'm abandoning her we'll be close by close we're gonna be downtown yeah we need to talk about that what happened they rejected the offer i told you we came in too low I, i'm not living on that boat david you've made that very clear the nerve of them rejecting that offer they didn't reject it they accepted it okay i'm confused there was another bidder, Amy, and the price started to climb. I just asked myself what exactly we were doing. You pulled the offer after I got my head around the idea of living in a townhouse? We're not living in a townhouse. What? We bought the McGuinn place. What? I went over there last night. Marty? McGuinn, is that right? Yeah? Yeah. Nice guy. Let's check it out. We agreed on the price. We did the deal right there on the kitchen table. All that's left is the paperwork. I thought you said this neighborhood was too expensive. It used to be. Not anymore. Why? I sold my boat. You what? Found a buyer online. I made a killing, actually. Leave for St. Thomas tomorrow. Oh, David. You loved your boat. I'll get another boat. Or, or maybe a sports car. Well, no, it's going to be a boat. Except that there will be a boat. Okay, okay. we'll be a boat. I cannot believe you. I love this place. You do? Yeah. It's yours. Come on. What? Stay tuned for scenes from our next episode.